from Dyes Den and this week I'd like to show you how I made this card. I'm showing it to this angle because it's called a floating front card. So when it lays flat like this it will fit into a regular envelope but it holds out and when you, when you pull each section out it will stand up let me see if I can put that on an angle so you can see like so. So the whole thing just stands up beautifully. Now you I'm going to do my writing panel on the inside here, but if you really wanted to, you could make that another panel with beautiful something on it and put your writing panel on the back. So that gives you a few options. Now this card is not my design. I've seen this done by a few people. Um, one of them was Mixed Up Craft, but she did hers long ways. Um, sorry, long ways, um, you know, like lands, uh, portrait, and I, but I wanted to do one landscape, and I've actually put my mechanisms on a little bit different than how she's done hers. Now, this was my prototype, and I don't like this look here on the back, so I've actually made those a little bit longer for that reason. Oh, you can hear the rain outside. So, we're going to make this one, and I'm making it in a regular... Uh, size card not a seven by five but when I do have put my um uh, tutorial up I will have the sizes for this one plus this a uh, seven by five one that opens like this as well because some people like a little bit of a bigger card so I thought well let's do both so this is my prototype and we all know who gets all my prototypes Mum loves them and she, she lives on a retirement village so it's really nice because she can give them to other people that may be unwell or, you know, having a birthday or whatever. So she always finds reasons to give cards every, every week. She's giving cards to somebody. So there you go. So that's our card for today. It's called a floating front card and it stands up like that. So let me show you what we're going to be using. We're going to be using... This set, which is called Cup of Tea, and with the beautiful dies here. Now I've done my die cutting, and I've actually die cut this this um, cup and the plain cup, and I've glued them together, and I've already done that. The same with the lemon piece, and I can't remember. I didn't bring over the paper to show you what paper we're using, but it's the one that goes with this set. So. That's what we're going to be using. I'm also done a tea bag, um, and we will go from there. I'm using some old um, rhinestones. These are the noble peacock ones because I wanted these green ones here um, just to finish off my card. So that's what we're using. So I have all my parts, and as I say, I've done. Let me show you what I've done. I've done my teacups. Now to get them so that I've got one one way and one the other. I actually cut one lot upside down to the other but you get the same effect so and that's the what you're looking for so because I wanted my cups to have handles on opposite sides but if you want them on both the same side you just pop them same so you cut one with the paper up that way and then you would cut the other one with the paper up that way that way you get both lots of the way they are so and I've already stuck those down so you can see that I've also done my lemons I've got one there what have I done on the other lemon I've got two lemons here somewhere there we go there's another lemon so I've already done my lemons um, the same thing these only get cut one way so I did the lemons in this yeah this yellow paper here and the rind pit in the in the green just so that it stands out a bit my tea bags, I've actually done those and cut them out with the dies and stamped them. Um, I used a bit of uh, baker's twine in this green here, which is retired. And what I did is I actually stuck them onto the back with a bit of sticky tape and then trimmed around the edges so that they don't show. So that, that way they can hang over the sides of the cup. So let's pop them out of the way and we will go through all the pieces we need. Okay, for our main card, now I have to watch these because I don't want to get things muddled up. 
I think they are the three by three pieces. Yes, they are. So for our main card, we need a piece that measures nine and three quarters by four and one eighth. For my mechanisms, I need two pieces that measure three by three. So that's pop them out the way. For my insert part, well, let's go through that piece first. You need a piece that measures five and a half by three and seven eighths and five and a quarter by three and five eighths. Now this card is a tiny bit shorter only because it's just easier with the measurements and sixteenths. For my back panels, let's get them out the way. I'm using these lovely lemons off of this paper. So we're going to need, for our panels, we need two of each of these. We need two that are two and seven eighths by three and five eighths. And two that are two and five eighths by three and three eighths. And two that are two and three eighths by three and one eighth. And if you have a directional pattern, make sure that the three and one eighth is the length of the pattern. Otherwise, if, if you've got it like this way, if it's a pattern that mat matters, it will be wrong. Okay, so there's that. And then for my other two panels, again, you're going to need two off. So you're going to need two that are two and one eighth by three and one eighth, and two that are two inches by two and seven eighths, and two that are one and three quarters by two and five eighths. And once again, if you're using a directional pattern, make sure your pattern's correct. You don't need to worry about all the um, measurements because if you go over to Dyes Den for stamping, crafting and tutorials, you will find the, tu the written tutorial for this with all the measurements on them. So let's move those pieces out of the way for a minute and we're going to work on these two pieces. So I'm going to bring in my scoreboard and I'm going to score my main card, which is this piece, which is the nine and three quarters by four and one eighth. I'm going to score this using the small end because of we are using cardstock at one inch and two inches and seven and three quarters and eight and three quarters. Now you can always do one, two and turn it around and do one, two again if you prefer. So that's that piece and then we're going to turn it this way on the long side and we're going to mark one inch from the first line just down to the first score line like so. We're going to turn this over and it doesn't matter which way up this is so because it's only a, a, a guide for cutting and we're going to do exactly the same again. So we're going to go one inch and we're going to score it. So we've got two score lines here so we've got our four score lines and our two score lines that just come in the one inch here. These two pieces are three by three, so it doesn't matter which way around you want them. And you're going to score these at one and two inches on both of them, like so. And that's all our scoring done. So let's pop that out of the way. And what we're going to do with these ones is we're actually going to pull this around here that better. We're going to actually fold and burnish these, got this up the wrong way, in a Z fold. So we have a Z fold piece like this. Okay, and we're going to do exactly the same with the other one. Now if you felt like you wanted to, to turn it over to do the other score line, that's fine, but you don't need to because these are going to be hidden. So we just got these two pieces here and they're going to go this way around so that the two pieces that are flat are down and the two Zs go opposite to each other. So let's pop those out of the way for a moment and let's work on this one. So what we're going to do first is we're actually going to cut just below that score line to the two the other score line and then up on an angle to the top score line. So you've got this shape here. So let me show you once again, just below that so that we can get rid of that piece. Cross to there, to that first score line and then up on an angle across there. If you're like me and you can't cut that way very well and you 
not got to that one, just go back and redo it. There we go. So that's our cutting on that piece. And now we're going to score, uh, fold this one and we're going to fold this in on the second score line and back on the first score line. So we're going into the middle of the card with the second score line and back out with the first score line. So we have this funny shape like this. And it doesn't look like much of a card at the present time. But that's how that's going to go and then we are going to then glue these pieces onto here like that so that they fold over the top of that. So we're going to take this first one and we're going to glue it to the back of that one there. Let's pull my pin out, pop some glue on this piece here. By doing this you know that you've got them around the right way too. And you're going to pop this in so that it matches up along that score line there and along the bottom here. You'll find that this is just a tiny bit shorter than that one. You could make it that one eighth of an inch is higher, but I found if I were doing that, I was going to um, take the chance of cut, scoring it on the wrong side with one eighth of an inch. We're on top of that side and now we're going to do the same on this side so that that one pops out as well. So let's pop this one on here. And I'm going to pop this one along in here again, up to that score line, making sure that it's flush with the bottom of the card. And when you're happy with that, we can then push that down. And we have a bit. There's our pieces of card that are sticking out like so now. So that's that part done. While I've got my glue lid off, let's glue our panels together. So we can glue these pieces together, making sure, as I say, if you've got a directional panel, you pop your pieces in the correct direction, which is landscape, uh, portrait. I keep wanting to say landscape landscape for the inside but portrait for the outsides panels so we've got one panel there let's do the other one i could have done one of these earlier and saved a bit of time but never mind pattern on the back of this one reminds me of a pattern we had a few years back but in a, a bigger but similar pattern on some paper and last one here now in Berry Burst, if I remember correctly, which is quite a few years back now. Leave out the way you. Okay, so that's those panels done. And we're going to do a little bit of stamping for the inside and then we'll pop our inside in first. So I'm going to stamp this using Garden Green and I have here the words that say let's get together soon, I think that's what it says, no doesn't it, it says take care of yourself, <laughs> sorry and I'm going to pop that into the middle there like so and I've got yuck all over my fingers, look at that and pop that over there. Let me see if I can cover that with these. If not, then we will turn it over. Oh, look at that. That looks better. And I will do one on this corner here. 
shows I'm just as bad as everybody else or as good as everybody else and that's our insert done and pop that out of the way and rub this off my fingers so that I don't get it on to any more crazy person sitting at the table today I'm usually very careful with things like that for more than one reason okay so then that goes into the center of our card like so let's give that a thing down that way and pop this into the middle of the card it's easier to put this in now I don't know why I just find it easier probably because you can lay this out flat so this goes into the middle of the card now you couldn't do this on a single sheet because all overall it measures 13 and 3 quarter inches so you couldn't even do it out of a 12 by 12 so that is the reason why we've put those panels on like so okay so that's that we're now going to open this up at the first panel size and we're going to pop our first panels on and they are going to go like so but it up against that and making sure that they are down the bottom here like that so we're going to pop glue on this first one again just that first one to the score line and making sure if you've got your pattern up the correct way we're going to then if you can do this butt it up against that score line pulling that score pie up you will see whether you've got it or not and making sure that it's level with the bottom of the card now you could do this with you know tear and tape or whatever but to me by doing it with wet glue you've got time to um, wiggle it into spot place if you need to I'm going to do this one upside down so I've got to make sure I've got the panel up the correct way for the same reason you want to be able to bring it over and make sure it's level with the bottom of the card and along that score line once you're happy with that you can bring that down and give them a nice thing and you will see that they actually meet in the middle if you've done them correctly like mine do well I don't at the bottom probably because I'm not scored properly there we go there we go so get that right up there we will put that score line on the correct spot there like that and we have our panels sitting there like so with our next panels this is done exactly the same way we're going to pop this glue on this panel and this time we're going to butt this edge up with this edge and making sure that it's butted up against that edge and with the bottom of our card like so and do this exactly the same on the other side so we're going, making sure if you've got a directional pattern you've got it around the correct way butting this edge up with this edge and the bottom with the bottom corner by doing that you're going to make sure that you've got them nice and even and if you're happy with them you can then give them a bit of a burnish off with making sure that the glue is spread nicely and we virtually have our card made now so let's pop my pin in my glue because I'm pretty sure I don't need any more glue and I'm going to pop my pieces on so what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue my um, tea bags onto the back like so so they hang and dangle a little bit and then I can put a little thing on there so I've got some more sticky tape here so I can check whether they're long enough or too long well I think that's long enough so I'm going to put a bit of tape across that onto the back of my teacup making sure that I press it down nice and firm so that my tea bag doesn't fall out and if I'm happy with that yep 
if it's too long when you've done this you can always trim it off before you get to this this stage that's why it's always better to check whether it's correct for you because everybody likes their tea bag pieces at their own length once again, I can move that out of the way for a sec. We're going to pop that down nice and tight like so, making sure that my um, whatever you call those things, I can't even think what they're called. Tea bags <laughs> tags are in the right spot. I'm going to pop one little um, dimension on the back. I'm using the small ones just to pop my tea bag where I want it on that one and again the same on this one here and it's just so that it keeps it in place if you want it wobbling around that's fine too I mean there's no right or wrong so I'm going to pop that one over there with my tea bag and my lemons I'm going to give them a bit of a, a cut on an angle and then I'm going to just pop that over the top there like that and that way I can just pop a little bit of glue on this piece here just there so that when I pop this on here my tea my, my lemon will stick there in place next to my tea bag I will do the same on this one so Again, this is entirely up, entirely up to you if you want to do this or not. You don't have to. The, if you're using this set, it's just the way I thought it would be nice to decorate it. Okay, so let's pop that in there. Now, get on there. Move the scissors. And then I'm going to bring in my larger dimensions and pop some on the back of these. Oops, that's still not stuck yet. Let's give that a nice press down. Use the smaller ones for just on the handle there. Like so. Let's pull these off the back. Oops. Drop the whole lot, why not? And then we can pop these on. So I'm going to pop them over and I'm going to pop. Oh, I've got some sticky tape showing there. So just trim that away there so that it doesn't show. You don't want the sticky tape showing. I could just see that. One tea bag there. Making sure, no, I haven't got any sticky tape sitting there. One that side there, like so. And I'll just pop these green gems, just these tiny ones. One here on the tea bag tag. Oops, one there. And because it's so nice and pretty on the inside, I'm going to put one of these medium sized ones I think that's a medium sized one they all look like the same size to me now <laughs> maybe they are no they are one is a medium sized one there we go and that's today's card oh, I hope you've enjoyed that I really love it. I love the way it come together. It is just gorgeous. It's very easy to make. Um, it does sit a bit wonky on this because my board underneath here is actually warped. So I need a new board underneath this one. So, And that's our card for today. If you would like the written tutorial for this, please head over to Dyer's Den for stamping, crafting and tutorials. There you'll find the written tutorial for this. It will be dated the same day as the YouTube video. Um, it's free to join and we all look forward to seeing you there. 
and I'll see you again next week. Bye for now!